We're back. This is Dear Woke Christian. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for stopping by on today. It would take woke preacher clips to get me to put down that doggone Julie Roy's book. But here we are. Woke preacher put up a video the other day, and I think I've got to say something about it because it really feeds into what I've been saying that, first of all, Robin D'Angelo, her books, her writing, her speeches are not biblical. They're anti-Christian. Second of all, her teachings, they they should be nowhere near a Christian sermon, a Christian pulpit, or even a church. They should be nowhere near it. And trying to use her teachings to bolster your idea that um, white people are fragile and that they should not be angry when they're being falsely accused or slandered or lied upon. Yeah, we. this is just a lap too far. So let's just go ahead and jump into it, Jason. Tell me what you talk about. I'm glad you asked. So the other day, Woke Preacher Clip put up this video. And uh, let's pull it up and let's just talk about it real quick. So he put up this video, a panel discussion at Willie Rice's Calvary Church promotes D'Angelo's white fragility. So you already knew this was going to go south. So panel discussions in church on the pulpit um in the pulpit on the Lord's day have no place. I'm sorry. There's no place, no, no reason for panel discussions during the Lord's day from the pulpit when people come and should hear what thus saith the Lord, not what a panel says, not what a pontificator says. So you're already in deep kimchi by having a panel discussion on Sunday, but let's just say that this was not on a Sunday panel discussions on race oft times presuppose some things that are not in play. And this one, actually, they use a lot of different um, logical fallacies. Shout out to the developing dad who's doing an online live course on logical fallacies and how to spot them and what they are. First of all, what is logic and rhetoric? And then how to spot logical fallacies. And I would highly recommend that you check out developing dad, just all his content. He's usually addressing logical fallacies in pretty much all of his discussions, but he's doing a course directly aimed at addressing logical fallacies. I bring that up because there's quite a few of them in here. I'm going to do my best. I'm learning from the developing dad. So let's just see if we can spot a couple of them and see if we uh, pick them out. Let us go. Let's go. Are seeing the anger being let's expressed. Back up just a second, Jason. When okay. people who are in the white community are seeing the anger being expressed and they think that's out inappropriate. Why are you so angry? Let me also just build up. This is in June 2020. So this is right at the really the height of the summer of love with uh, the mostly peaceful protest by Black Lives Matters. How do you how do you help them understand that anger? Yeah. So we talked about this prior to uh, going live. But Robin D'Angelo has written a book called White Fragility. So if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be called um, appealing to authority. And Robin D'Angelo is not an authority on race issues. She's an authority on Robin's pontifications and Robin's mental gymnastics. But she's not a, a an authority. So he's appealing. I think it's called appealing to authority or appealing to false authority, one or the other. And basically what it means is there's this natural tension that happens in the dialogue between black people and white people when it concerns racism. And what I will say that there is a tension that happens between white people and black people when you talk about racism. A lot of the time, especially now, because we are just assuming something. So that is evidence, not in facts, not in evidence as a logical fallacy, as well as I want to say it's called red herring. But it's also just assuming you assume something that's not in play. So just because you get upset because I, I accuse you of something, I'm sorry, I accuse you of something, you get upset about it. Why I say that you're being upset is proof that you are whatever it is I said you are. That's not the case because what if what you're saying I am is actually a lie? What it says is that it's such, an, it, uh, such a uh, sensitive topic that can be offensive, um, that there is a fragile nature to the white culture when they get in dialogue with this. And okay, I'm gonna stop right here because he's gonna really he's gonna really go far off the field. So because a white person does not believe what you believe about racism 
or partiality, especially when you're assuming that they are racist or they are partial and you don't have facts, you don't have evidence to that to that degree. Why is that bad that they're upset? Why would you want to be a person that shared a false narrative and 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 actually lumped it on your brother or sister that they were wrong because they got upset about your false narrative? I'm just wondering. Even as I'm listening, I've heard it a couple of times where I, I don't mean to be offensive. Right. Well, it's like, to me, it's like preaching the gospel. So let's just put this in context. Robin D'Angelo and her wicked, evil maturations. You're going to put those on the same scale, on the same level as God's word, as the gospel. That's what he just did. I mean, did you? I'll go back and we'll just make sure we heard it correctly. Back up just a taste. Make sure we give him a room. Let's run. It's like preaching the gospel. If I preach the gospel, it's going to offend you because mm -hmm. it's going to tell you you are sinful. There's nothing good in you. And the only way you can get right with God is through faith in Jesus Christ, through his death, burial and resurrection. So the God actually that is the biblical gospel. And that is true. That is a very true statement. However, to equate the the phony, false and fake assumptions of racism or partiality on people groups is not the same because actually you're saying that the there's one of two things you can do. You can say that the claims of racism are the same claims that God makes that we've offended him and we're we've offended a holy, just and righteous God and we deserve damnation. We can say that the phony, false and fake claims of racism are on that same level as God's claim. Or we can say that these phony, false and fake notions are garbage and God's word and God's judgment on our sin is garbage too. There's only two ways we can do that by putting this phony, false and fake weight on the scale. The gospel is extremely offensive because it tells me I'm no good. Yeah. And I can't get good without Jesus. Which is, by the way, that is true. We are not, there's no, there's no righteousness that we bring to the table or we can bring into the equation outside of Christ. There is no righteousness. Our righteousness has to be foreign or alien to us. And it is in Christ and Christ alone that we have righteousness. Correct. Talking about racism will be offensive. That's not because the same it thing calls though. out the evil that's in our hearts. It calls the out pride, the sin. The pride that Derek talked about. That's right. Which the is pride. at the heart of it. It calls it out. That's right. It calls it out. So there is going to be a level of offensiveness. So here's what I would say. I would. But wait, wait. He, he made the level of offensiveness. Let's just assume the level of offensiveness that a, a person of less melanin would experience. If I was saying that they were racist, that level of offensiveness, he's putting it on the same level as us offending God. I'm just saying, I'm just making sure I understand it because he's going to go way off the rails right here. We're going to actually. Open up our Bibles in a second. Say, it's okay to be offended, but begin to work beyond the offense to get to the process of understanding. So how do we help people? But if they're not really racist, because again, you're presupposing racism, sir. You've already assumed it. That is true. That it is the right thing. Again, I've, laid, I've said many times, racism is not a real thing. It is partiality. So even though he's assuming partiality and if you have no proof, no evidence in, in play, then, sir, you are not assuming the best. You're not loving your neighbor by treating them equal. You're assuming ill just because of their ethnicity, sir. That is evil. I'm sorry. There's no other way around that. People understand where we're coming from. Why are we so angry? Why are you so Number angry? Number one, you've got to get past your offense. Number two, like Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter four. Okay, let me let me pull this up real quick because he, he says something I've never heard this before, and I, I'm just really gobslapped that somebody allowed him to get away with this. So this is Genesis chapter four, Cain and Abel. As I like to encourage you, always always read all of the text in its context. I'm going to read just the verse eight to verse eleven, but please read the whole thing. It's good to do that. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And uh, 
we'll we'll stop right there. So listen to what he does with this verse though. And if I can find it correctly. God came to Cain and he said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? And Abel said the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. He got it from his daddy. If you, if you go back to chapter three, it's crazy. He says, am I my brother's keeper? In other words, he was saying, that's not my brother. He's my enemy. Where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Where are you getting the, and I read a couple of commentaries before I just, I haven't found anybody. Maybe there is. Please feel free down in the description or the comments below. Please let me know if you have an example of a commentator, a reputable commentator saying that Cain viewed his brother as his enemy. Now, I mean, in by default, or you could technically say, yes, he was his enemy because he killed him, Jason. Okay, I got you there. But where does it say that in the text? I don't see that. I mean, we could assume that, but where does he see that? And, and he's going to carry this brother enemy thing out a lot more. So that's why I'm wondering, but let's go. Mm. And when you fast forward to the New Testament, Jesus has asked the question, what is the great commandment? Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second, that is correct. I don't like what he does right here though. The second one is like the first, well, wait a minute, Jesus. I didn't ask you about two commandments. I only asked you about one. Right. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to hear this. Let's keep in mind the first commandment to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, mind, soul, and body. Um, and the second commandment being like the such, being being similar, love your neighbor as yourself. That's really the whole summation of the Old Testament law. That's it. So what he's about to do right here is some mental, spiritual gymnastics that, I mean, I hope you guys are ready with your scorecards at home. Please uh, get ready because here he goes. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And on these two things, mm -hmm. all the law and the prophets hang. Yep, right? there we go. And so what Jesus is showing us is that there's this concept of brother and neighbor that are exactly identical. Brother and neighbor are exactly identical. Okay. I mean, there's... I mean, I can see where he's going. I mean, I can see what he's saying. I just don't like where he's going. And he's saying that your neighbor is your brother. Your neighbor, if you cannot identify with your neighbor as your brother, but more so as your enemy, then you can't say you love me because the Bible tells us if you say you love God whom you have not seen, but you hate your brother whom you see. Oh, let me pull that up, too. By the way, I did have that up here as well. And that is uh, First John. And just in case you're wondering, First John 4. Um, really 7 through 21, but the verse that he's saying, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother when he, whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And that's verse 20. Please read the whole thing in, in context. I think it's really good. Um, so really, you can, and you also see it played out here in verse seven. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. So I understand what he's trying to do, but I feel like, no, I feel like, I mean, you, you see it like you're doing too much. You're doing too much. Like the, the scriptures were perfectly fine. You, you love your neighbor as yourself. So if a person of less melanin has beef or, or, or animus toward a person with high melanin, then they're in sin. You don't have to assume sin because you don't know it. And that's the part. I don't think people realize that you're bearing false witness. You are lying against your brother and sister. If you're assuming that they're racist or that they're partial and you don't have any facts or evidence to the to that fact then you are, you are bearing false witness. And unless they've done a sin, unless they've sinned against you, you don't have the latitude to just unilaterally say somebody is a sinner because they have less melanin. We don't have that. God hasn't given us that prerogative to do that. Every day you are a liar and the truth is not in you. And I say this to black and white. If you hate people who right. you see every day, but you claim I love Jesus, He's all I need. You are a flat out liar. The truth is not in you. And so we have to be.
honest and real about the fact that from the beginning, from Cain and Abel, this has been a issue that has been perpetual throughout the generations is that we have failed to see our brothers as our brothers, but we have seen them as our enemies. And that hurts God and it hurts us as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to, I think it's adorable that he literally said that we can, if we are bearing false witness or seeing our brothers as our enemies, then we are hurting God. We are, um, and, and hurting our brothers. But isn't that what you're doing? If you don't know that your neighbor is a racist, I mean, following this logic, we could go around and say everybody is an idolater. I mean, an adulterer, everybody, because everybody has thoughts. And we just know, I know your thoughts. I mean, we would, if, if we started a movement like that, you all would say, Jason, um, that's not going to work. We're not going to be able to rock with that. Not going to work with that, Jason. That's not going to be a good look. Well, you would say that. Then why are we saying this? Because you're assuming thoughts that you don't know. You don't know this. And how do you, if you know this, let me know how you know that this white man right here on the stage, this dude right here, how do you know that he is a racist? How do you know that? How? You don't. So therefore you can't assume that. So because that guy just sat there and pontificated all of that, it means nothing. He literally said nothing because we don't know that these people are racist. Or they've demonstrated some level of partiality. Now, if you demonstrate a level of partiality or you demonstrate something that's considered racism in the true sense, not just you hired your cousin or you're white. I mean, that's just dumb. So that doesn't make you racist. No, it doesn't. So I would love for them to explain that and push back on this. This does not need to be in Christ church. And this is what happens when you start embracing Robin D'Angelo and her false narratives. You get emboldened to say insanity and crazy things to brothers and sisters in the Lord. And there's no room for it. Christ didn't give us that latitude to do it. He did not, ex he did not intend for it. And we can't do it. I don't, I don't understand. There's no other way to say that and, and not just sound redundant. Like we can't do that. This dear world Christian. And I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for checking out what I'm saying. Please feel free to drop down in the comment section. Let me know. Hey, Jason, man, you are off like a cough, man. And please let me know chapter and verse where we have the right and the latitude to just declare people sinners when there's no sin present and evident. But please let me know. And if you feel like, hey, Jason, I hit the ball out the park. Jason, I understand what you're saying. Let me know down below as well. I really appreciate it. And if you don't mind, since I am the black pope, I am doling out indulgences. I'm, I've rolled out the new crypto indulgence and NFT indulgences. Those ones come directly to your um, your digital wallet. So just let me know. We'll drop those right in there. And if, the reason I'm giving those out is you gave me a three-piece special. You gave me a like, a share, and a comment. If you don't mind, please. I also give extra bonuses. If you're not a subscriber already and you subscribe, you get triple NFT indulgences. And if you're new to this channel, you don't know what indulgences are. What do I do with these indulgences, Jason? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked. Indulgences are um, what you get in order to do away with white guilt or oppressor mentality. So if you're a person of less melanin and you're being accused of being a racist, say, hey, the black Pope gave me indulgence. Bang, here's my indulgence. I'm good. My sin is forgiven. Or if you're a black person, you don't buy into the narrative and they say, hey, you're Uncle Tom or you got oppressor mentality. Bang, the black Pope gave me indulgence. I don't have to worry about that. Well, what's going to happen to me, ladies? They're going to say, what are you talking about? Crypto indulgences, indulgences, black Pope, that's all made up. And then what you do is you just say, hey, and so is what you're saying about racism. And so is what you're saying about oppressive mentality. They're all made up. But what's not made up is the gospel. And give them that good old gospel, man. Give them that good old solid Jesus so they can return from its foolishness and walk in the freedom that you have in Christ. This is Dear World Christian. Brothers and sisters, if you need me, you know where to find me. And in the meantime and in between time, until next time, everybody, grace and peace.